awaken the health world through the power of radio. It's the Robert Scott Bell Show. All right, this is quite a healing revolution Friday here with Professor Peter Duesberg from UC Berkeley and uh, enjoying immensely every time he's with us. Such a, a lighthearted soul, despite a lot of the attacks and, and barbs thrown his way over the years because of what he uh, stands for from a scientific perspective is, is here's what we find, this is what I report, and no, I'm not going to change my report just because it's not popular. Uh, and that relates, okay, back to the issue of HIV causation of AIDS. But right now we're talking HPV causation of cervical cancer. Now, you recently connected with Norma Erickson of Sainvax. How did you guys connect? That was almost by chance. Uh, you may know a friend of mine who supports my research um, as a philanthropist from San Francisco, Bob Lepo's name. Yes. He, uh, he uh, had a connection with Jerry Brown, our governor. Mm-hmm. And uh, he said he wants to present him with the evidence from our paper, which he, which he supported, um, that this paper may have serious uh, health, health consequences or implications, namely that the vaccine is not only for nothing, it's not useful against the cervical cancer, but also because of its very high rate of serious adverse events, as mm-hmm. they call it, including by now 216 girls who died from the vaccine, 216, that's a pretty high number. Yes. Um, for that reason, we should, we should uh, alert the governor of, of uh, uh, yeah, cautioning uh, Californians, at least, to take that vaccine until there's proof that it, A, can prevent the cancer, mm-hmm. and B, that it's safe, rather right. than having a huge number, like 2 to 3% of the infections lead to serious adverse events, including deaths, autoimmune disease, neurological disorders, fatigue, well, faintness and fainting. Mm-hmm. Well, we covered, Peter, we've covered on the air here that the, largely the Democratic-controlled uh, state of California and Governor Brown were very anxious to get this law put into place to make the uh, HPV shot available or even somewhat mandated for, for girls and, and adolescents. And how did he respond, or is that too early to tell how he's responded to the publication of this paper? It is too early because he's just preparing it now. And okay. it was in the process and preparing, writing up for him a sort of a case, much like the, no, the Erickson paper is now. Yes. And, um, and it was in that process, like just a month ago, less than a month ago, I found out about the whole scandal, or let's say controversy about that vaccine, and particularly about the name of uh, St. Wax and, and, and Norma Erickson mm-hmm. and... Uh, other several other names as well, so I didn't know any of them until now. And but she was very enthusiastic. After a couple of questions, would she help? And she said, "This is." She understood it. Re- spent the whole weekend reading it and said, "I have to write something, or we have to write something about it." And I said, "I'm on your side, <laughs> of course." Beautiful. That's how that beautiful. Happened. Yeah. And so you, you d- at this point again, it's recent connection with Norma, but you had already been engaged. It, do I understand this correctly? In an analysis in a lab, in a cancer lab in Hawaii, to study this issue, the connection, the link, or the not link there. Is that correct? Yeah, there and at home here, too, in Berkeley. You know. Okay. But in the summer, too, I had even there the benefit of, my, of Max this week. He came along. He wanted to come along and work in a laboratory. Your son, Max, yes. Some, but yeah, yeah. And, uh, of course, there were other people there, too, the director included. They were very helpful. They said, uh, you can do anything you want and as long as you be around and can talk and give seminars to each other and so on. Mm-hmm. Very free atmosphere. So in this, in this way, you were able to, what, make analysis of previously uh, published materials on the subject matter or were you able well, to work no, with... No, more, more specific than that, I analyzed nine cervical carcinomas that are available in culture. You know, they've been taken out right. and kept going in culture. Yep. For the virus, for the presence of the virus, and most importantly, for a theory that we are testing that you may know about in cancer, that cancer actually is a form of a new species. It has its own new carrier type. Chromosome set is different in cancer than in normal cells. This brings up the concept of aneuploidy. Exactly. It yeah. is aneuploidy is the word, but uh, what it is actually, it, aneuploidy is essentially a negative. It mm-hmm. means it's not as we are. Right. But if a new species evolves from us, like cancer, 
every species has its own karyotype. For the cancer, it's not at all a nuploid. That's the karyotype that makes it an autonomous new species, a single cell right. species, much like bacteria. Okay, stand by and, with and that. So we tested that prediction in the nine carcinomas that we analyzed. In every one, we found exactly as predicted by the COE an individual new clonal karyotype. Okay, like hold that thought, see. Professor Duthberg. we got to take Good. a quick break. This is only getting more interesting as we go. Stick around. Yeah. HPV? Is it linked to cervical cancer? Not as a causative agent. We'll reveal even more when we come back. Making sense out of medical propaganda. Here's Robert. All right, we continue our discussion with Professor Peter Duesberg from UC Berkeley and uh, enjoying every moment we get to talk with him about this, not only because I'm an egghead, a little bit of one, but also (laughs) because of the information that he's revealing here is very empowering, especially to women who are concerned about the HPV issue and cervical cancer later. And look, it's a legitimate concern. We don't argue that. But are we being led by the medical authorities, the pharmaceutically conflicted medical authorities, down the wrong path in terms of prevention uh, causation, understanding, and even treatment. And that's what uh, Professor Duesberg is helping us to understand is he's done a major uh, a study that has just been published. We've also got it linked up in the show notes at robertscottbell.com to SaneVax. Norma Erickson helped to get this out as well, and the original study as it was published in the literature. Um, we were just understanding a little bit about the chromosomal description of identifying these things to say, no, it really isn't caused by the human papillomavirus, but there are chromosomal abnormalities that may be due to other causes that are real and measurable, but not the virus. Can you can you revisit that for us, Peter? Exactly, yeah. So what we asked is, we started asking is, if it is caused by the virus, the first prediction would be, we would find the virus, or viral proteins causing it in every single cervical cancer. And we did. We looked at that, and that is not the case. It is in many, like in 70 or 80 percent of the cervical cancers, you can find traces of, and that's very different. Not the whole virus, not an active virus, fossils, pieces of DNA from infections long prior to the cancer appeared. Typically, cancers around 30 or 40 or 50 viruses appear when you're at puberty, when you're young and get first infected neutralize it by antibody, and then in your system, you will find for the rest of your life fragments of viral DNA. So that's what we found, but only in about 70% or 80% of the carcinomas. And guess what? 70 to 80% of all females and males in this country have this virus. So we have a correlation with with the virus, when with the cancer, when the cancer is there, but when the cancer is not there, it's the same cancer without the virus. So that was not a great support for the virus. And the second part for the virus was no activity. The virus doesn't replicate, doesn't make DNA, and doesn't make proteins. That's the most important part for a vaccine. A vaccine can only work against a, if a virus were the cause of the cancer, if the virus makes proteins, the va- vaccine it recognizes foreign proteins. A virus is foreign. That is what the vaccine can do. It, it, it helps against polio and measles and mumps, all of your known well, it, yeah, it, 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 it stimulates it, uh, the production of antibodies through an artificial mechanism, and that's the whole basis for it. But here, as they promote the HPV vaccine, based yeah. on the fact that they want to, or they're claiming that, oh, if we can activate your antibodies uh, or alert the immune system to the presence of potentially, we'll attack it, neutralize it, it won't cause you a problem. But it appears that in these 70 to 80 percent of the cases, they were already neutralized and they were not factors in the production of this cancer. That is exactly right. And the second very critical point is, in the tumor cells, in none of the tumor cells do you find any virus, protein. No proteins are made. Even if the immune system were at the highest alarm possible against the viral protein, mm-hmm. it couldn't do anything against a cancer that doesn't contain these proteins. And it, it, and would, be, it, it would be impossible for the immune system to see these cancer cells as virus caused, if the virus were the cause, because there's no viral protein in them. To None at all. And, and None, is it, is nothing. It, Peter, is it fair to say that, you know, earlier in your career, part of mm-hmm. your research 
was going into the viral causes of cancer. Wasn't, weren't they looking for causes of cancer when somebody stumbled on the retrovirus scenario and then it all blew up into the AIDS scenario and that whole thing? And so it's not like you just started this research to, to make a link, to find a link that seemingly wasn't there. Oh, I, that is indeed my life. Yeah, that's what <laughs> I've done ever since I'm in America. We were following up the then very promising theory that viruses are the cause of cancer. And that is one of the reasons why, or a major reason why it failed. You can't find in human cancers viruses or viral proteins against which the immune system could work. That's why they are never immunogenic, as we call that. Right. The cancers are made out of your own proteins, not from a virus. An immune system doesn't help you against your colon and breast sure. and lung and cervix and any other cancer because it is not doesn't contain viral proteins. Right. Now, we've also talked about when we, we've discussed before the aneuploidy and the book and everything else, that there were toxicological causes of chromosomal abnormalities and damage. You know, this is, goes to epigenetics, environment, the environment impact on gene yeah. expression. That if, you know, and, and when you were the controversy over the whole AIDS thing, when you said, hey, drugs are a big cause of this immune deficiency scenario. Could be street drugs, but could also be antibiotic drugs and, and pharmaceutical drugs. And that was, of course, something that the establishment couldn't withstand or couldn't stand you saying, and they had to attack you for it. Uh, so you're not changing that perspective. You're only elaborating specific to the cervical cancer that the same mechanisms are in play. Yeah, ex more or less exactly the same, yes. Uh, see, it's again uh, with AIDS where we struggle that or with viral cancers. The trouble is whenever you look at AIDS patients, you don't find any viral proteins in their cells or in the presumably cancers that AIDS is associated with either, which even includes cervical cancer. They say that is also HIV cause, mm -hmm. whatever it is, uh, competing with another virus. But even more so uh, in any of the tumors that you can produce in animals, when they get a tumor from a virus, the tumor appears much after the infection and the virus is long neutralized. It's not an immunogenic tumor. That's why the tumor comes up. Right. So when we talk about carcinogenicity, uh, some are acknowledged of the many thousands and thousands of uh, synthetic chemical components that have been added to our environment, food, water, air, etc. Uh, and it's known that those things do cause cancer, but no one has yet said, ah, this virus, until they started with the PR campaign of the human papillomavirus, that they said, oh, yeah, it's definitely the cause. But they never proved it was the cause. Not at all. I mean, it's very difficult to prove a non-cause a cause. <laughs> It's yeah, but it's good when they have 20 to 50 years to kind of profit in the meantime. It, that's, that helps to, to, yeah. <laughs> to spend their time, to, to do further studies, as we call it. Yeah. Uh, Claire Mali says, the Institute of Further Studies. <laughs> they push the same old theory and say, oh, we have to do more work on it. Send us instead money. Of, Send us more money. And, and instead of finding the right one. And that brings me to actually the, the major result of our studies on on the cervical cancers. Our theory is, and it's not even a new one, it has been pr proposed even 100 years ago in a way, that it's not mutations or viruses that cause cancer, but a whole new rearrangement of your karyotype, of your chromosomes. You're no longer the 46 chromosome human being. Now you have 70 chromosomes in your typical cancer. 70 instead of 46. That's a huge change in thousands of proteins and in thousands of genes. That cell is so different from you like a grasshopper would be uh, from my mother or me. <laughs> yeah, a, exactly. It's, it's a completely different species. Mm -hmm. It expresses thousands of proteins higher and thousands lower than in normal cells. It is just totally out of control and out mm -hmm. of um, regulation. The body... Uh, that is what makes it the cancer cell, not one or two latent viral proteins that you cannot even find. Right. Uh, but we ask the question, Peter, we ask the question, how do these things manifest? And then we begin to identify real or genuine causes. We go back and acknowledge some of the great scientists of history, Claude Bernard, uh, Antoine Béchamp, who talked about this, who were uh, also shunned in their day because the Profit Center went to the concept of germs, eventually viruses, as right, well right, as causation. Right, yeah. Yeah. yeah, well, and not to forget uh, George Papa Nicolaou, who mm -hmm. is very closely linked to the cervical cancer. Mm -hmm. What did he discover? What did he show in 1952 when he invented essentially the pap smear? He said, look at these cells under the microscope. 
they have almost twice as much DNA, meaning twice as many chromosomes as a normal cell. That's critical. Now we have to do something. That was his observation. That is essentially what we are following up and showed corresponds to a new clonal karyotype for each cervical cancer. Everyone is different. That's what Papa Nicolaou already said. There are classes where the DNA is much, content is much different, different from normal, and then the cancer is typically very malignant. And if it's slightly different, it's more controllable, with, more, with better prognosis for cancer. Peter, has anybody else followed up on that work since that time it, besides you? Are you able to share this and people understand what you're saying, or is this still now another... It, it re- is, it's odd, and you see, I'm referring to papers that have been done mm-hmm. in the 60s, 70s, uh, after Papa Nicolau, and have actually shown that these chromosomes are abnormal in every cervical cancer. Okay. But nobody had a good theory about it, so it was essentially left left alone in favor of this now popular mutation theory of cancer and viruses, mutation and viruses. Those are the two things we are all chasing now. And Zuhausen is one of that generation. Oh, there's another virus. Let's chase that. They had actually before a herpes virus and said that was the cause of cervical cancer. Then the consensus moved to the papilloma virus. Right. So so they they tried that virus. And when there is no virus, guess what is the cause then? Poorly defined mutations that we still have to study. Poorly defined But they never consider, really never, you can see it in that paper, not in the last 15, 20 years, the chromosomes, the karyotypes, they didn't touch them. Strange right. enough, they didn't look at it. Well, they, it I, we caught them by surprise. Yes, so, but <laughs> if they did, Peter, if they looked at those chromosomes, then they would have to ask questions, what's causing the corruption of those chromosomes? And then they would have to start looking at these multi-billion dollar industries that are polluting all of us. And, of course, yeah, that's, that not, is, that's not good for politics or business. That is a, a trivial, but actually even that has been done in the 70s and, and 80s by the CDC and here by Wall Winkelstein in, in Berkeley. They have shown co- that uh, cigarette smoking is a major factor in it. It doubles the incidence of cervical cancer when you are a smoker. For 10 years, you have twice right. or three times more uh, cervical cancer, but who, including, who, of course, colon and lung cancer. But cervical cancer, when they check specifically, is responding to smoking. Mm-hmm. And probably other carcinogens as well. But who is liable when it's a virus? It's not a Democrat virus. It's not a Republican oh, virus. virus is God. Right. That's God. Exactly. You, can, you have to attack God. That's Peter, so good. we're we're all going to rush out and get HPV shots now, right? Uh, that's, I mean, they offered it even our doctor. I should say that. I don't want to give a name. But uh, to Max Fisberg, he said, you're 18 years old. You can decide for yourself. No, you better don't take do an HPV shot. Peter, yes, we, we, we have run out of time, and my goodness, my friend, I don't want to make it so long between your next visit. We've got to stay up on top of this, especially when you get back from what you hear from Governor Brown, okay? Very well. Okay. Okay, Robert. Stick it's around. I'm going to talk to you on the break in just a moment, but Peter Duesberg is with us. Links up in the show notes at mm-hmm. robertscatbell.com. Extremely grateful for all the good works that he does. We'll be right back.